Hello and welcome everybody. So I've been getting a lot of requests on what the hell the furnaces in my builds are used for. And so I figured I would just make a quick video to explain why furnaces are used and why, you know, when you become more in a, of an advanced user, you start using things that look complicated like this. So let's start. So here we have a register cell. Here is a data bit. And then multiple data bits are the vertical column here. So just one data bit is this. And then we can store multiple different cells. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cells of one bit. But they're actually eight tall. So there's a byte in that cell, a byte in that cell, a byte in that cell. So we have seven bytes of memory. And so what we want to be able to do is we want our data to come through and we want to be able to latch this repeater. We want to lock this repeater using this comparator. Now the thing is, this comparator the, gets signal strength that ranges. It ranges from 15 signal strength here to 14, 12, 10, 8, 6, 4, 2. So if we do this, you'll see that this the signal strength here is a 2. Which means we want to be able to lock this repeater when a 2, or when this signal strength comes on. So that means if there was 15 signal strength behind here, that would not work. So what we want to do is we want to put a signal strength of one behind here. And so that furnace right there is a signal strength of one. And so two is greater than one, so that inverts it and allows that cell to be written. So there's one use of those furnaces right there. It allows us to write to the cell without needing to put a repeater onto this line to power through here. If we use a short signal strength here, because it doesn't have to go very far distance, it's literally powering right into the repeater, it will lock it. So that's why we're able to get away, away with that. So you can see that's what's done here. And then the other thing that's nice about these blocks is that they're solid. You can place components on them and you can power through them. So now we have another uh, furnace on this side. And the furnace also, you can place blocks on and you can power through. Um, so if we look at this furnace, what was it doing? Well, if we come to the bottom here, this is where these are really important. Well, that repeater out of the back there is going to output 15 signal strength, which means out of this comparator is going to come 15 signal strength. It's going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up to the top. But we only want that signal strength to affect this torch, and we want this signal strength to affect that torch, and we want that signal strength to affect that torch, and this one to that torch. So we only want this to go to a max distance of 2. 1, 2 to there. So we got to do 15 plus or minus what equals two. Well, 15 minus, or, or three, I guess, because it can go up to this one too. So you can either use a signal strength of 12 or 13 in here because we either need it to go one, two, or it can go to there and not affect it also because it can't make it to that torch. Just like that one would be able to go one, two, there, and not go to that torch. One, two, there, and not go to that torch. So that's what these are doing. So that's a read. So now what we can do is then we can flood this read and then whenever this gets turned off in one of these spots, oh, that's a bad example because the read isn't there, but then you'd have to also enable the read and then all of a sudden you'd get that bit to come through like that. So this allows for very compact reads and writes using these um, furnaces. What sucks and the negative thing about the furnaces is they create lag because they're ticking tile entities because they hold objects. So if you can get away, if you need to hold 15 signal strength, you're better off not using a furnace that has 15 signal strength in it. Use a, a cake or, or, or whatever other object, a solid object, like an end, end portal or something like that with a, a, an uh, end eye in it. You know, there's other ways of generating 15 signal strength. But what sucks though is um, if you need 15 signal strength, like you could use a redstone block, but a redstone block affects redstone sitting next to it. Whereas if it repeat, this thing had 15 signal strength in it, it can only pull it out based on a comparator. Now let's go look at another example up here. Um, it's actually over here, sorry. We'll look at a few examples of what these furnaces can be used for. So here's um, uh, my paint that I built. So with these furnaces here, this is an AND gate. So this has 15 signal strength in it. But this bec because this is a solid block, you can power through it. So you can actually see that um, 
Oh, actually, these ones don't get used as power through. So this one, these, these could have probably been replaced with some other mechanism that don't get ticked. But these are just holding 15 signal strength because it's an AND gate here. And then it acts, uh, it allows for the pass through because here's the pass through. And then so the other, for instance, back here, this is holding E. So we're, we're taking 15 coming in and then we're going to subtract um, uh, 13 from it and we're going to get generate a value of 2. Or wait, oh no, we're taking F in and we're subtracting E, so we're going to get a value of 1 through here. So if I flip a lever here like this, you'll see that in here becomes a value of 1 and it can get pulled through by that. But if this was off, that value of 1 cannot affect anything else on this line here. So that's how we can pass signals through without it affecting it. And we can still have this line come through and affect all of these ones the way it's supposed to. And we can pass data through like that, like that. So that's pretty neat. Um, here we're using them as inverters, so that has 15, so we could have found a different way. Like we could have used something that's not ticking here. Um, furnaces here are also used as inverters. Um, but they're not holding the full 15 signal strength, it looks like. It's holding 14. Um, here, same deal. Inverters, but only with signal strength of 2. Because we only need to go here, which means they can get triggered as short signal strength, so you didn't have to have a repeater up on that. Not that it matters, we have a bunch anyway, but like that's because of the stack necessary for this repeater to come through like that. That's why it needs all those repeaters like that. Um, here's some more furnaces for the same thing. Another AND gate here, so when this one's off and that one's off. The power will come through here. You can see that if you do that. So that's the AND gate, just with inverted inputs. And then uh, here is another pass through, same way as before with the comparators. Um, so that's some things you can use comparators for. Um, I'm going to see if I can find any. Oh, yeah, I have uh, up here some more stuff. With, uh, with uh, furnaces. So here I have some RAM that I made and you can put in some data like this. So we have the least significant bit, the most significant bit, and the bit under the most significant bit on. And I can say write that to that spot there. And we can see that it's coming out and then I can just decide to not read it but um, I guess all these need to be like this by default. Yeah, so we can choose to read it, or if I had something in a second cell, so I can write um, some other data into the second cell here, and then read from the second cell, and then you can see that data comes through there, or we can go back to reading through the first cell. So our data's in there. And so the way this works is the comparator here or the furnace here and the comparator allow for a two wide stacking cell that staggers up and down because you can power you can put uh, components on the furnace like that and then that comes through here and so now here's a lot of trickery going on right here so here we have the AND gate where if uh, well here's one that's not hooked up to a cell because uh, it starts behind it but if we were to power into here, you would see that when you power up through, oh no, this is a bad example. Let's do it on the other bit. Yeah, so when we power up through this here, this line has to come all the way up and it gets the weakest signal strength of one here. Well, this one, we still need to trigger it uh, the, the encoding the bit onto the signal below, which is what this does. This is like the inverter, like a torch would put us, uh, would power onto the register below. This is acting like a torch, except I'm not using torches, so everything's torches here. So, um, what you can see is the data bit comes through here, gets, comes through this, uh, uh, comparator, and, and the behind here is a signal strength of one. So a signal strength of one, gets pulled through here and gets inverted by that. And then that signal strength of one will only ever be able to make it through here because that signal strength of one gets pulled by the repeater. The repeater doesn't see the signal strength of one in there. It sees it from that one because of the comparator there. 
But this comparator doesn't see the comparator power from here, it sees the block signal strength. So that's how this is able to work. The comparator pulls the signal strength from there, not the power coming from that comparator into that block. But this repeater powers, grabs the power from this. So it's a lot going on right there. And so because of that, I'm basically able to hook them all up like in such a way that allows me to have reads very effectively. Um, using the same mechanism that was used in the reads for this over here, the, the same thing here where you you have one inverted read at the bottom and then you're able to subtract signal strength out like that. That's exactly the same thing that's being done over here, wherever the heck it is. Yeah, over here. It's exactly the same thing being done. Where as the signal strength comes up here, it gets weaker. So you need to be able to trigger it with just a one signal strength input. And so that's why this coming in here is able to, to provide that. And uh, yeah, um, some other things maybe? Let's see. I'm not sure what else I have. I may just cut the video off here. Um, so thanks for watching. If I find any other things that I think might be interesting to show you, before I render this video, they will be clipped in here also. So, yeah, thanks for watching, and I hope that cleared up some of you guys' confusion on why I use those furnaces. Peace out. Okay, so I found another example, and so here, in this unit right here, this whole thing that I'm circling right here with my cursor is an incrementer. It just adds one to whatever's coming in on this bus. And so you can see here that we have this uh, holding 14 signal strength, that 14 signal strength comes through and can be inverted here or be toggled there. But then we also have redstone running over this that gets pulled through here. So these furnaces get used are useful for that where the repeater will pull the signal strength from the redstone whereas the comparator pulls it from the block and doesn't see the redstone signal strength. The comparator won't pull the redstone signal strength when there's a comparator behind it. So that's how that works. Um, yeah. Okay, so I also have this really quick counter, which you can see is doing it two ticks on, two ticks off, coming through and counting at that speed. And so what I'm doing is there's no uh, torches used in here. So I'm actually making it count down and then I'm inverting the output because that's the easier way to do it. And so what I'm able to do here is I'm able to take the output of the counter, bring it through, and have this compare or this repeater power through this block and come through here. But then I'm also able to take that same thing and have that repeater come through over there and get and invert the signal because there's 15 signal strength behind it. So I'm able to pass signal strength through and then invert that same signal. So that's how you're seeing it count up, even though it's actually doing the opposite and counting down or just inverting the output so that we see it counting up. And then, of course, the other thing was just being able to make sure that it could branch. Um, if you do something like that, you have to give it a longer, you have to give it a pulse length um, longer than two ticks, but it'll branch. And if you go back, boom. Hmm, wait a second. Okay, maybe this one. Oh, that's right. This one can't branch. That's right. I remember. Yep, no branching it on this one because there's no way to disable this feedback loop. No way to stop it. Okay, well, that's all for today then. I hope you guys got some more inspiration about what I'm able to do with uh, furnaces and hopefully that inspires you to use them in uh, cool ways that you can get some stuff done with. Like, here's another example where. Um, you can invert, so there's 15 signal strength in here, it gets inverted and powers through here, this one does that, powers through there, that one does that, powers through there. So those are all just inverters that are able to be stacked like that. Same with those. Same down there, you can stack inverters. You can see this just by me doing this. And then if I turn off the middle one. I just want to do every combination so you guys can see there's no crosstalk between them. It just inverts or just passes through the signals that you want. Like that. So, yeah, that's it. See you guys next time.